Their story begins at one of the best high schools in Korea. At that time, a teacher named Yu Bin was seen punishing two male students. The two students were caught taking pictures of the girls. Therefore, Yu Bin punished the two students, named Shan Min and Ji Ho. After making sure they wouldn't repeat their actions, Yu Bin told Ji Ho to return to class first. Meanwhile, Shan Min, who turned out to be Yu Bin's future brother in law, begged at him not to report this incident to his sister and father. As a teacher, Yu Bin asked Shan Min not to repeat his despicable actions again. After that, Yu Bin became a little curious about Ji Ho, who appeared to be very quiet. Therefore, he began looking for information about Ji Ho, but suddenly, his friend, named Sung Boom, called him. It had been a long time since they last met. So Sung Boom invited Yu Bin to meet up and spend time at a nightclub. Initially, Yu Bin refused because he was about to get married. But Sung Boom mentioned that he had two beautiful women acquaintances. Eventually, Yu Bin was tempted to go with Sung Boom that night. When they arrived, Yu Bin told Sung Boom that he would only drink and then go home. But Yu Bin's phone suddenly rang, and it was from his fiance, Shonae. Yu Bin was afraid that his fiance would find out that he was still going to nightclubs. Therefore, Yu Bin immediately ran to the nearest convenience store to pretend he was elsewhere. However, when he was at the store, Shoni didn't answer her phone anymore, so Yu Bin decided to return to the nightclub. Upon arriving there, Yu Bin saw that Sung Boom was already with the beautiful woman he had mentioned. After that, Yu Bin entered the VIP room and was captivated by the two girls. In the end, Yu Bin continued drinking with the two women until he passed out. Upon arriving at Yu Bin's house, one of the girls named Daewon immediately took off his clothes. In a semi-conscious state, their intimate moment was recorded by Daun as a keepsake for later. The next day, Shonae suddenly came to his house, so Yubin quickly cleaned up the mess from the night before. With a tense face, Yubin invited Shonae to come inside, but suddenly Shonae wanted to go to the bathroom. Realizing that Daun's lipstick stain was inside, Yubin tried to make an excuse that Sungboom had clogged the bathroom the previous night, causing Shonae to change her mind. In the afternoon, Yu Bin went to see Sung Boom and told him that his phone had gone missing the previous night. Yu Bin then explained that the only thing he could remember was that he was too drunk and went home with two girls. Hearing his friend's story, Sung Boom immediately searched for the last known location of Yu Bin's phone using his software. After finding it, Sung Boom quickly erased all the data from Yu Bin's phone. On the other hand, Shonae's return to Korea provided Yu Bin with the opportunity to visit her family. However, Shoni's father seemed unfriendly, while her mother expressed her deepest gratitude to Yu Bin for being a good homeroom teacher to Shan Min. Not long after, Yu Bin's phone rang, this time from an unknown number. The unknown caller asked Yu Bin to find a quiet place immediately, and Yu Bin quickly excused himself to the toilet from Shoni's father. Unexpectedly, the caller demanded that Yu Bin prepare 39 billion won before 6 p.m. on Wednesday. If he didn't comply, all of Yu Bin's dark secrets, including his drunken affair with the two women, would be exposed. Haunted by anxiety, Yu Bin met with Sung Boom to ask for his help, where he asked if anyone had been following him recently, but Yu Bin suddenly remembered an incident from seven years ago involving someone named Ga Young. Yu Bin recalled that at the time, he and Sung Boom had collected 8.1 billion won as hush money for Ga Young, whose private video they had spread. Because of that, it seems that Ga Young now wants to take revenge on him. The two of them immediately started looking into where Ga Young was and her current condition. But despite their best efforts, they couldn't find enough information to locate her. Sometime later, during a wedding dress fitting session, Yu Bin couldn't focus at all. While talking to Shoni, the mysterious caller called again and asked Yu Bin to place the money in a trash can at a specific address. After that, Yu Bin and Sung Boom went to the address, carrying a bag with 9 billion won. They then put the money in the box and waited for someone to take it. However, after waiting for a long time, no one came to collect the money. Suddenly, Jiho appeared and startled both of them, asking what Yu Bin was doing in that area. Not wanting to arouse suspicion, Yu Bin explained that he was there to meet Sung Boom, who was pretending to have just returned from America. Hearing this, Jiho quickly excused himself and left the place. Evening arrived, but no one came to take the money. Shortly after, a garbage collector came to pick up the trash. So, Yu Bin and Sung Boom immediately apprehended the man. When they opened the plastic bag, the money inside was gone. It seemed Yu Bin and Sung Boom had been careless, 
and they returned home empty-handed. That night, Yu Bin and Sung Boom planned another strategy. Because the mysterious caller now demanded that Yu Bin send the money again, but this time in Bitcoin. Fed up, Yu Bin asked the caller to meet in person and asked if they were Ga Young. Unfortunately, the call was abruptly disconnected. The next day at school, Yu Bin was increasingly uneasy. He even started remembering the incident with Ga Young seven years ago. At that time, Yu Bin had apologized for spreading the private video of his ex girlfriend and insisted that he had no malicious intent as it just happened. Additionally, Yu Bin offered Ga Young some money as a settlement. Unfortunately, Ga Young refused, saying what good was money in such a situation, as the video would never disappear from the internet and her face would always be remembered as that of a ruined woman. In the end, Ga Young swore that one day she would take revenge on Yu Bin and Sung Boom for what they had done to her. In the present, Sung Boom suddenly called Yu Bin to inform him that he had found out where Ga Young was. Because of this, Yu Bin rushed to the location shared by Sung Boom, which was a public cemetery, where Ga Young now worked there as a grave digger. Upon arriving there, Yu Bin immediately approached Ga Young and asked if she was behind all the terror. Hearing this, Ga Young admitted that she indeed harbored a lot of hatred and revenge towards Yu Bin because his actions had ruined her life. However, Ga Young claimed she was not a lowly person, as she had long since made peace with him and was trying to start a new life. However, Yu Bin denied all of Ga Young's words and continued to accuse her of being the perpetrator of all the terror. Tired of arguing, Ga Young walked away and said that even if she did take revenge, her video would still be on the internet and her revenge would be futile. Shortly thereafter, Ga Young's husband arrived and immediately asked if Yu Bin was the despicable person who ruined Ga Young's life, then started beating him. After that incident, Yu Bin became frustrated due to the lack of clarity and finally decided to report the matter to the police. Meanwhile, Shonae began to suspect that Yu Bin was cheating, so she went to the nearest mobile service office to track the mysterious number that had been calling Yu Bin. However, due to privacy issues, the service provider could not disclose the owner of the number. Because of this, Shoni became even more anxious and confided in her friend. Her friend said that there are always obstacles before marriage, so Shoni just needed to trust Yu Bin. The next morning, the principal instructed all teachers to list all students with above-average grades for enrollment in prestigious universities in Korea. However, Yu Bin was not present at the meeting, so a teacher named Sung, he quickly went out to look for him. It turned out, Sung Hee had also noticed Ji Ho's odd behavior lately, and as his homeroom teacher, Yu Bin was questioned in detail by her. Hearing this, Yu Bin then explained that some time ago, he had punished Ji Ho and Shan Min for taking photos of the girls, where he explained that it was for the good of Ji Ho and Shan Min. However, Sung Hee regretted Yu Bin's actions of taking matters into his own hands, saying that such issues should be reported to the school committee. On the other hand, Ji Ho, who was on his way to school, stopped briefly at a nearby convenience store with a mysterious box, intending to send it somewhere. At school, during a lesson, Jiho suddenly asked his teacher for permission to go to the bathroom. However, instead of going to the bathroom, Jiho attempted something unthinkable. This shocked the entire school, and Jiho was immediately rushed to the hospital. The principal then asked Yu Bin what had actually happened to Jiho, the genius student who always ranked first but this semester finished at rank 50. As the homeroom teacher, Yu Bin should have known about this. Unfortunately, a confused Yu Bin could only remain silent and leave the hospital. A few days later, the police visited Yu Bin's residence to help trace the source of the phone calls. This time, the mysterious caller asked Yu Bin how it felt to be in such a bad situation. Additionally, the caller added that Yu Bin's life was now over, and the call was abruptly disconnected. Fortunately, the police managed to trace the origin of the call. Shortly after, the lead detective, Jiyo, became slightly suspicious of Yu Bin's behavior and asked what the bad situation in his life was and if there was anything Yu Bin was hiding from the police. But Yu Bin remained silent and said he didn't know what the caller meant. The next day, Shoni and her father suddenly received a mysterious package. When they opened it, it turned out to be a video recording of Yu Bin with the two girls from that night. Shortly afterward, Two bodyguards suddenly approached Yu Bin at school and immediately took him to a bridge where Shoni's father was also waiting. At that moment, the man expressed his disappointment to Yu Bin and regretted having given his blessing for his daughter to be engaged to a lecherous man like Yu Bin. In the end, 
the man ordered his men to throw Yu Bin into the river. Full of pleading and regret, Yu Bin immediately apologized and admitted all his wrongdoing. But it was all in vain because Shonei's father would never forgive him. Shonei's father then asked if, besides the video with the two girls, Yu Bin had also ever recorded intimate moments with his daughter. Hearing this, Yu Bin answered yes, prompting Shonei's father to prepare to kill him. However, Shonei suddenly called her father and said that she would be returning to America the day after tomorrow and asked him to let Yu Bin go because they no longer had any relationship. Although he survived, Yu Bin appeared very stressed and depressed because his dream of having a beautiful life was shattered. Yu Bin now regretted all the actions he had taken in the past. Initially, Yu Bin suspected that the person behind the terror was Ga Young, but it turned out not to be her. Yu Bin even thought that the tormentor might be Ji Ho because he had punished him, but Ji Ho was also not the one. While meeting with Sung Boom, Yu Bin could only hope that the tormentor wouldn't spread his intimate video with Shonei. However, their conversation seemed to be overheard by the tormentor who had hacked Sung Boom's computer. As time passed, Yu Bin's life became increasingly unsettled until he finally decided to stop teaching at the school. At the same time, Jio received new information from her team that Yu Bin had previously been involved in a case of spreading private videos. Because of this, Jio also began to suspect him. Sung Hee, who was shocked by Yu Bin's resignation, invited him to meet at a cafe. At that moment, Yu Bin began to express his regrets about what had happened to Ji Ho. But Sung Hee reassured him that it was not his fault. In the middle of their conversation, the tormentor suddenly called Yu Bin and insulted him again, saying that his life was now like living in hell. Moments after hanging up the phone from the tormentor, Yu Bin saw a brochure with a photo of a woman who looked familiar to him. Because of this, Yu Bin immediately ran out to find the person distributing the brochures. At that moment, the man explained that he was only tasked with distributing them and didn't know much about the woman in the photo. However, they got the photo from a live streaming session on a YouTube channel called Bing Bing. That night, Yu Bin researched the live stream and found that it was run by the two women he had slept with. He then immediately sent a gift that made them both happy and willing to do anything because the gift Yu Bin gave was very expensive. Therefore, Yu Bin sent them a message to meet at a certain place. When they finally arrived, Yu Bin rammed Don's car from behind. Without hesitation, Yu Bin demanded to know where his phone was, which they had stolen at that time. Hearing this, Da Wun replied that they didn't know because they were only instructed by someone else, and that person was Sung Boom. Hearing the confessions of both women, Yu Bin was filled with rage and immediately met with Sung Boom, starting to beat him. As Yu Bin was about to bury him alive, Sung Boom finally admitted that he was the one who stole the money from the trash can at that time. That's why the tormentor asked Yu Bin to send the money twice. Additionally, Sung Boom apologized for instructing the two girls to seduce him. However, Sung Boom swore that he was not the one who had been tormenting him all this time. Reluctantly, Yu Bin let Sung Boom go that night. After a series of confusing events, Yu Bin was seen sitting pensively in front of Ji Ho, who was still in a coma. At that moment, Yu Bin could only wonder what had driven Ji Ho to do the unthinkable. Was it because of the punishment he had given, or was there something else weighing more heavily on his life? Not long after, Yu Bin met Ji Ho's mother and asked if Ji Ho's behavior and attitude had changed recently. With a heavy heart, Ji Ho's mother explained that lately, her son had been locking himself in his room frequently. Additionally, every day, Ji Ho always seemed in a hurry to respond to someone's messages. When his mother asked him about it, Ji Ho said that nothing was going on. Curious, Yu Bin then asked if he could access Ji Ho's phone. However, Ji Ho's mother said that since the incident, her son's phone had not been found. In his desperation, Yu Bin decided to put an end to all this. Yu Bin and Sung Boom then devised a plan, where they both realized that Yu Bin's phone was still being tapped by the tormentor. Therefore, Yu Bin deliberately reactivated his phone to deceive the tormentor. Additionally, Yu Bin and Sung Boom met Sung Hee and asked her to read aloud the address where Ji Ho's phone, containing secrets about the real identity of the tormentor, was located. That night, the mysterious man came to the location read by Sung Hee over the phone and immediately began searching for Ji Ho's phone. At the same time, Yu Bin also emerged from behind a bookshelf and said it was a trap. Additionally, Yu Bin realized that Ji Ho had become more withdrawn and that his grades had also plummeted. Despite this, Ji Ho had only one friend among many people at school, 
and that friend was none other than Shanmi. So, the tormentor who had been terrorizing Yu Bin all this time turned out to be Shan Min. Arrogantly, Shan Min then asked if Yu Bin had truly experienced hell. It turned out, Shan Min did all of this because he knew that Yu Bin's phone also contained many private videos of him with other women besides his sister. As for Ji Ho, Shan Min only considered him a fool with no friends. After Shan Min learned that Ji Ho desperately wanted friendship and would follow his orders to do various bad things, including taking pictures of the girls, which led to both of them being punished by Yu Bin. Realizing his actions had been discovered, Shan Min intended to broadcast this moment live on the internet. Shan Min then asked all viewers to bet on who would survive the final battle. Unfortunately, Yu Bin was unprepared, so he was shocked by Shan Min's sudden attack. Meanwhile, Sung Hee suddenly received a package notification from an email in Ji Ho's name. Because of this, Sung Hee immediately went to the convenience store and retrieved the package. Upon opening it, she found Ji Ho's real phone, containing all the evidence of Shan Min's bullying. Back to the fight between Shan Min and Yu Bin, where Shan Min managed to defeat Yu Bin and took the phone he thought belonged to Ji Ho. At that moment, Sung Boom suddenly called that phone and shouted that Shan Min was surrounded by the police. Enraged, Shan Min turned on Yu Bin. But with his remaining strength, Yu Bin managed to turn the tables and nearly killed Shan Min. However, Yu Bin remembered his initial intention to become a better person for a better life. After the incident, Shan Min was apprehended by the police. Not only that, but Ji Ho also began to wake up from his months long coma. Yu Bin then thanked Sung Hee for helping him catch the tormentor. Unexpectedly, Sung Hee expressed a desire to start a relationship with him, believing that he had truly changed. A few months later, Yu Bin took the time to visit his former student and ex future brother in law, Shan Min. At that moment, Shan Min showed a happy face when visited by Yu Bin, as if he felt no guilt at all. Shan Min even told Yu Bin that his father would send some money to him if he would keep quiet and settle the matter peacefully. However, Yu Bin refused, reasoning that no amount of money could make things better, and the disgrace of Ji Ho and Yu Bin would not simply disappear from the internet. Hearing this, Shan Min just laughed, seeing that Yu Bin had truly changed. Moral lesson from the story, always remember. If you dig a hole for someone else, you'll probably trip and fall into it first, especially if you're bad at digging and really good at tripping.